you might not expect an old bus station in Savannah to be one of America's hottest restaurants. But with Martha Teichner, we're making a pit stop to visit the Gray. The past is what brings tourists to Savannah, Georgia. Its historic district, the Antebellum South, caught in a picturesque storybook time warp. All right, you guys right there, just like that. A few blocks away is the Gray, as in Greyhound, a destination restaurant in this destination city. Looking for three tuna, Victor Moose. With a very different story to tell about Savannah's past. The story of a reckoning with race. I was just thinking about what this place used to be, a segregated bus terminal, and behind us was the colored entrance and the colored waiting room. This is what it looked like when it opened in 1938. Not the wreck John O. Morisano, a transplant from New York City, bought in 2012 and decided to turn into his idealistic dream of what a restaurant could be. In my sort of simple thought process of it, I was a white guy, you know, a black woman would be my perfect counterpart um, to running this place. Before the meeting, I thought, am I going to be a symbol here? Am I going to be a living, breathing political statement? Because I didn't want to. Trained in France, Mashama Bailey was a sous chef in New York City, working for a prominent woman chef, when Jono, a media entrepreneur with zero restaurant experience, approached her about becoming his partner in the gray. We talked about pork shanks, right? And we both realized that our grandmothers both cooked pork shanks. And that was a, that was a common moment for us. It's nice to come back and see what it, what, what it is now versus what I remembered as a child. And this is the house? And this is the house. And although she was born in New York, Mashama had actually lived in Savannah for six years as a child. Factor in the building. The building is an obstacle that you guys have to work with. A building Mashama once would have had to enter by the back door. This isn't about being comfortable. This is about moving with purpose and thinking ahead. The Gray opened in 2014. The loaded history of the place, part of its identity. But Jono and Mashama avoided any discussion of race. That question really um, came home when we had our tragic event here, um, where, you know, that was where we really had to confront it because it was unspoken. It was, it was unspoken. I was often the only black person in the room. The tragic event was the death in front of Mashama, of the Gray's general manager, Scott Waldrop, run down by three young men fleeing a shooting in 2017. I didn't know how much I trusted Jono until I called him that night. Scott was a huge um, part of the gray. Of the gray. I answered the phone and she just was um, apoplectic, kind of like, you know, wailing and hard to make out and everything. Maybe we started to really see each other as partners at that point. You know, it's like in tragedy and in trying times, you figure like out who forge. your friends are. Yeah. Right. I used to walk to school this way. I walked to school this way every morning. What started then and continues still is a conversation. I agree with that. Good, I'm glad. Um, my plan worked. Yes, your plan was awesome. <laughs> FYI, Mashama swears she didn't rescue a greyhound because of the restaurant. I want to add some a la carte items. By the time Jono asked her to collaborate with him on a book about the gray, they trusted each other enough to face head on everything both of them had until then left unsaid. And I didn't want to talk about race. I didn't want to talk about our, my feelings about race. And I didn't want to talk about his feelings about race. And what you know? happened? We talked about race. It was hard. It was hard. hard. <laughs> it was it was hard. hard. Mashama and Jono, accompanied by Jono's wife, Carol, rented an apartment in Paris. And the book took shape. 
It was like a six week long therapy session about ownership, pride, pain, fear, confusion. It was really about opening those wounds and dealing with them. Was I that guy who was talking a good game about progress, diversity, women's empowerment, because there was nothing at stake? Why would you hate us if we have nothing that you want? That dialogue would become the book, Black, White, and the Gray. Was this part of my racism, my legacy, that remained hidden away in my unconscious? There's always a question of intent when Black folks and white folks do business together. The emotion was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And Mishama can talk about how many times I cried and how many times she cried. Um, it was less than him. <laughs> the restaurant is their safe space now. You can't walk the streets of Savannah and deny the bounty that this part of the world has to offer. I'm doing some creamed collards. I've never had creamed collards. <laughs> we smoke half of them, embrace half, and then we blanch the other half, and we incorporate it with the bechamel. Little Parmesan cheese, butter, flour. Mmm, the nice smokiness. You say it? And the sweetness of the onion. Yeah. Mm. In 2019, Mashama Bailey won a prestigious James Beard Award and is up for another this year for cooking that continues to pile up accolades and blow to pieces preconceived notions about what Southern food is. The Gray is surviving COVID. A painting hangs above the most visible table. There's a Greyhound bus in it. Black people are sitting in the front, whites in the back. And we had more than a handful of people walk out of the restaurant, you know, before ordering because they were offended by it. The picture is quietly provocative. Just like the conversation, Mashama Bailey and Jono Morisano have dared to have. I don't think Mashama and I are fixing anybody's problems. <laughs> I don't think we're fixing Savannah's problems, the South's problems, America's problems. We're not even fixing our own problems. What we're really doing is just creating a dialogue and almost like a safe space for a dialogue between each other. And that's the best we can do, you know, I think.